Hey guys, so in this lesson we're going to start on probably one of the largest and most important topics within grooming, which is clumping. Clumping is incredibly important, but as I said, very large topic. So this will be broken across three separate videos. This first video is going to go over what clumping is, how to layer multiple kind of clumping modifiers, how to control the clumping profile, and how density relates to the size and shape of the clumps. And after that, we'll go into you know how to paint mass to remove the effect, how to do a percentage, and just how to do modifiers and really break the clumps up. But these first two parts are going to be back to back, and then we'll do some work on other modifiers and get back to clumping just at the end, just so you know what noise modifiers and cut modifiers do on their own and how they affect clumping. So I've set up a very basic scene. It's just a plane with hair shooting up and a curved plane with hair that kind of goes along the side of it. These are both the same groom, they're the same description. It's just so I have more control, or like technically less control, but it's just so everything I do is applied to both. The reason I've done this is just because clumping can be very hard to understand on just one of these. On the kind of the flow example, it can be hard to understand what the shape is doing like exactly. And on this, it's hard to understand how the breakup really applies to you know, actual creatures, because creature fur very rarely does this. There's, there's very few examples of creatures with perfectly straight fur. So let's just hide this. So what is clumping? Well, clumping is basically when multiple hairs are attracted to each other, and that can be for many reasons. One of the primary ones is wetness or greasiness. Basically, grease can kind of clump multiple hairs together, like kind of they stick to each other, they get a little bit sticky. Uh, and they form kind of cone shapes or tubes, whatever you want to call it. They basically just form a larger shape than individual hairs. It's kind of structure within the hair, and that's why it's so important. Clumping provides structure, which non-clumped hair doesn't have. Like this, it looks very kind of non-distinct. Like you couldn't tell what this is on at all, but clumping would start to tell us what kind of life this fur has had. So creating clumping action is very simple. All we have to do is go to the modifiers tab, click on this little plus icon, the third icon along. And this is our first modifier we'll be creating. And hit clumping. And the first thing you're going to get is a nice error, which just says no clump guides have been found. And before you worry about having already broken action, which you know, is always possible, this is actually the standard behavior for the clump modifier. I don't really know why, to be honest. But the first thing we need to do is set up the maps that it's looking for, because currently it's looking for a map that we didn't create. So to do that, all we have to do is in our clumping modifier, scroll down to setup maps, and we get this little icon here. So I'm just gonna hide the groom and hit generate. Now, all this is doing is generating random points around the mesh. And we'll get into what these settings mean in a moment. I'm just gonna hit save and then generate those. So that's kind of the default clumping. And you can see it's actually, it's interesting looking. It's obviously not natural by any stretch, but it gives us it gives us shapes, and this automatically looks more interesting to me than this. Obviously, somewhere between the two would be better, but on its own, that looks a lot more interesting, especially from a distance. So, let's just go back into that set of maps and start to understand what things are happening. So, at the top, you got your point directory. Just leave this alone. The this is fine. You don't need to change anything in this. So we'll just move straight onto density. Density. The same as with the base groom description stuff that we covered in lesson seven or lesson nine, I believe. This works exactly the same. So if I set this to five and hit generate again, we've got five times more guides and we can set this to any number we want. There is a slider. I don't really recommend using a slider for anything like this. So I'm just gonna set this to, let's say three, generate that. And I'm just gonna hit save. And you'll notice how our, our clumps got a little bit smaller. And this might kind of confuse you to begin with, or it might not. We'll kind of guess you'll find out. So what is going on here? I'm just going to set this to not update. Well, basically, what these points are is saying, OK, the hair that's closest to this point will be attracted to it. So with these straight lines, that might really not make any sense. So it's better illustrated if I click on Preview Guides. These are our clump guides. These are kind of the master hairs that all the other hairs get attracted to. So what you often find is if I change, let's just look at this section, for example, if I change the density of this, let's say it to 20 to be really obviously different. 
hit save on that and just hit preview guides again we're getting more hairs so if you kind of think through this logically well the hairs that are closest to these points are going to be attracted to them so if the points are really close together you're only going to get like 10 hairs 20 hairs that are being pulled towards one clump if these are further apart from each other let's hit preview guides again you're going to get more hairs attracted to it because it's basically just going to give you like a shape that goes between these so if i show that groom you see how it's just like lines being drawn where the close if if a hair is placed on this side it's closer to the guide that's over here if it's placed on this side it's closer to the guide over here so it clumps to that guide so just to really hammer that home density is the size of the guides a really high density results in smaller clumps which are visibly a lot tighter they work generally quite well i, I generally prefer to have quite small clumps but this should vary a lot based on your reference so i'm going to set that back to one and just hide the groom. So next we've got mask. Mask is something you can paint a map for this. This just says where it's gonna generate the clump guides. If you're doing incredibly dense clumps, you will want to paint a mask just to kind of speed up the generation. Because if you've got a huge character and you're making very tiny clumps, it's gonna generate uh, clump guides for the whole model by default. It's not gonna generate just where your hair is. It's gonna generate everywhere. But one kind of nice little feature of this that is not really mentioned in the documentation is the way it behaves is quite interesting i'm going to set this to three and so we've got that many guides if i set this to zero we're naturally going to get zero guides if i set it to one we're going to get this density of guides however if i set this to 0.5 you're going to think oh it'll give you half the guides Yes, but the way it gives you half the guides is really interesting. Setting this back to one, you'll notice that they're quite uniformly placed, like they're all pretty much the same distance from each other. And visually what that'll mean is the clumps are pretty much all the same size. Mask, if you set to a value lower than one, it doesn't place the density again. It deletes the density at random. So what you end up with is a value of 0.9 has a little bit of variation in it. So you can see just over here, we've got an, a large area with no uh, clump guides in it, which means we're going to get a slightly larger clump in this area. If I set this to be really extreme, at 0.3, let's just update that and generate again. And then I save this. We're getting a huge amount of variation within this and 0.3 is way too large of a change. Way, way too large. I really don't recommend doing that. And we can have multiple clump modifiers to get that effect as well. But I normally find that having a value of 0.8 or 0.9 just gives you a little bit more of a natural feeling because the hair isn't always the same. You can see how we're getting some clumps that are slightly larger than others. In this case, 0.8 might still be too low as well. So let's hit generate on 0.9 and show that again. So we just get a little bit of size variation. You know, these clumps here are a little bit bigger than these ones, especially down here. We're getting quite a big, bit of a difference. That can really help make things feel natural. So I recommend kind of playing about with that. But again, use very, very subtle values. You don't want to go lower than 0.8, I'd say. Uh, mainly because it will cause a little bit of kind of flickering. If this is set too low and you've got multiple clump guides, it can cause flickering within the clumps where the closest uh, clump guide changes on every frame in the animation. It gets very confusing and the workaround for it is is quite technical for a beginner you want to avoid that stuff so an important note to make as well though is that every single time we hit generate it's going to generate a new set of guides so i'm going to set this back to one just for simplicity's sake it's going to generate them from scratch again every time so every time we hit generate you're going to get different clumps they're going to look mostly the same but they'll be in different places so do be aware if, if you really like how your clumps look, you might not want to regenerate your guides. So that's kind of it for the general shape. Obviously you can change the point display and that will just give you kind of larger or smaller kind of vector lines. This can be left alone, to be honest. And you can also load a map, which is this paint, uh, point directory. Again, this is something you won't really load. And you can also hit guide. So what has guide done? Well, guide, if we show the guides, has just generated a clump at the base of every single guide in our scene. In the case of this side, you can't really see them. They're kind of hiding in there. Uh, 
but it's not clumping to the guide, it's just placing a clump at the exact root of the guide. So visually it looks like it's just clumping to your guide. This can be incredibly helpful. Generally, it's good to avoid. It can be quite hard to make a groom feel natural with guide clumping. Obviously, there are incredible groomers out there who do use a lot of guide clumping, and you know, for more animated styles, it can be very, very powerful because you can get exact shapes. You don't have to worry about interpolation. It will give you exactly what you're putting with the guides. It just looks a little bit weird unless you've got lots and lots and lots of guides. You also need to have your guides placed more randomly than mine are. I normally work with quite grid, uh, grid like guides and straight lines, which doesn't work with guide clumping. It just looks bad. So let's just hit generate on that again. Down here in maps, you've got a kind of control map area. By default, you'll actually have nothing here. It'll be set to something like this. However, just because of the setup of my scene, I have to have this turned on just so that these two meshes don't intersect with each other, don't kind of interpolate with each other. But by default, you'll see something like this. This Texel's P unit. Don't worry about this stuff. It will all. It should all work just fine. This Texel's P unit is just a kind of resolution of the internal maps. If you need kind of sharper clumps, this can be used a little bit. But generally, this is going to work just fine. I'd leave it alone. So let's just hit generate on that and hit save. In fact, actually, I didn't turn uh, region maps back on. So if I show that. We're going to get some weird kind of clumping artifacts in some areas, although we might have gotten away with it in this case. But let's just turn that back on anyway for security's sake. Yeah, so there we go. So that's our first layer of clumping. So now we can get into kind of how to control that. We're going to get into masks later. So I'm going to leave that alone. However, we've got clump scale just here, and this is best viewed over here. So I'm going to turn on color preview. And all that will do is kind of color each guide or each clump uniquely. It's just this little checkbox down here. And if I change this ramp, you're going to see what's happening. It, it's kind of, it's given us control over the actual shape of this ramp. It's, it's quite an interesting way to work. I personally will only ever use like three different points, but if you want to do like wet hair, you could do something like this, you know, just tighten it towards the tip. And with a little bit of noise that can look, um, it can look quite good. It depends on what your reference is doing though. So I'm just gonna get rid of both of those. But this ramp is just, this side is your root, this side is your tip. 0.5 means it's not being attracted. Going up to one would repel it from the base, so it gets wider at the base. And pulling it down to zero, will basically, it will grow the hair and then immediately pull it to the guide. So set that back to 0.5 with value just here. If we go into our primitives, so this is something that I did mention in the guides tutorials, but the modified CV count is very important here. So with a straight kind of clump like this, we can get away with quite a low value. Like I have to set it from 24 down to eight and it looks pretty much the same. However, if I start doing stuff that requires more detail, so something like this, and then go into the CV count, set this to like four, it's going to start changing the look of our clump. So this is where it gets really important to make sure you're using the correct CV count. Uh, basically just use the one that allows you to get the actual shape you're doing. Just be aware that this is a factor. So if you cannot achieve the shape that you're looking for, it's possibly just your modified CV count being too low. So just be aware of this. I've got mine set to 24, which is a little bit high for a majority of grooms. However, for the sake of demoing these shapes is pretty helpful to do. So. We've kind of covered the, the basics of it. I'm gonna get rid of that point there. We will be covering in future lessons how to break these up, but for now, we're gonna create one extra layer of clumping and that'll be the end of the lesson. So with clumping, one thing that you'll need to be aware of is that clumping very rarely happens with one layer. And what does that mean? Well, basically these hairs are clumping to one large clump. You know, Each color is just individual hairs attracting to one big clump. But generally speaking, within this clump will be even smaller sub clumps. So the way you can do that and is just go into create a new clump modifier. And that will immediately give us the same error as before. I'm just going to turn off this color preview. And then I'm going to hit generate maps on this guy. So we can put whatever value we want in this. However, this is incredibly important because this can prevent or in most cases cause flickering. This density that you use should be around three or four times more dense than the first clumping you did. Mainly because visually that's generally how it works. So the other one was set to three. I'm gonna set this to 12. 
generate that and just hit save. And that would kind of give us clumps within our clumps. But just to kind of go back to that point, if I was to set this to, let's say, two, it's going to try to clump these clumps that we create, layer two, to the clumping modifier below it. So if I just go into preview guides, uh, let's go into this one and hit preview guides. They're clumping to the layer above. You see how they're all being pulled in? Maybe if I turn on color preview, preview guides. You see how they're all being pulled into those big clumps? So if I was to have this set to be less dense, the small or the second clumping modifier would be larger than the, the, the actual, the one that's supposed to be larger. So that's going to cause a lot of issues for kind of the under the hood calculation and it causes a lot of flickering. It's also visually very confusing. So a good guideline is to do about three or four times the density. And this is where that mask thing comes in. If this is set to have too much variation, you may find that this again is larger than the, the large clumps below it. So that's why I tend not to go lower than 0 0.8. But yeah, so that's kind of, that's it with the, the basics. We can go into each of these and we can paint mass individually. We can add noises, we can do whatever we want. But fundamentally, you can see that this looks immediately better than that. Clumping is so incredibly important. At a very large distance, you wouldn't see the difference. But as you get closer, not having those clumps will just feel wrong. Clumping is something you really need to make sure you get right. Try to get it as far, try to get your groom as far as you can with the clumping and the guide work alone. Because generally speaking, you can get the look you want with this unless you're doing something incredibly fluffy. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be covering how to break up the clumps. But just as a summary to this one, make sure that you're always, always setting the density to three or four times higher for each layer. You can change the mass to add more variation and you can control the shape with this little ramp just here. And yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next lesson and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye guys.